Good morning, everybody. I'm Angus Forbes. I'm one of the co-PIs of the OVAI uh, NSF-funded project, and uh, I'm an associate professor at Purdue University. So myself and my some bright graduate students have developed a project called Fathom GPT, which is a natural language interface that leverages GPT to query the FathomNet database. Um, I provided a link uh, to the prototype. This prototype right now is just running on a lab server. So we'll see what happens if everyone tries to access it at once. If it breaks, I may ask you not to create while I give the demo, but we'll see how it goes. Um, the main functionalities of Fathom GPT uh, is that it provides a pretty robust name resolution of common names to scientific names, an ability to search by uh, various concepts, including morphology, color, predator-prey relations, and environment or location. Um, it uses natural language prompts to create complex queries, to retrieve relevant images, and to display uh, related data, taxonomic data, scientific measurements, salinity, oxygen levels, et cetera. You can also search uh, for similar images by uploading an image of your choice and then writing a custom prompt that relates to that image. And then we'll search the database to look for uh, images that uh, are constrained by what your prompt describes, as well as um, the visual features in the image itself. Uh, kind of excitingly and, and a, not perfect yet, but I'd, lo uh, I'd love to get feedback on the, our, the FadNet's ability to create custom interactive visualizations on the fly based on natural language prompts of the FadNet database. And then finally, we're working on some features to search the FadNet database by image features or by pattern. So um, I've shared the link and let me uh, feel free to look at it or follow along. I'm going to share my screen and just run through some demos. Um, give me one second. Okay, so you should be able to see. Um, let me move this out of the way. the Fathom GPT interface. Um, I'm just going to run through some examples. Feel free to ask questions at any time. Um, and I just want to show you the, the features. So you can type in or you know press some of these example prompts, something like, what color are moon jellyfish? So the first thing that we, the database has to do, or the, or the, sorry, Fathom GPT has to do is resolve what moon jellyfish are. Um, and once it does that, it can just use GPT to figure out uh, what these species are. So it answers moon jellyfish, scientifically known as Aurelia arita, are translucent and have a color, so pale white appearance. They do not have a specific color as their bodies are mostly transparent. So that's just some general knowledge um, that it's able to determine. You can ask questions, you can type in what is the scientific name of moon jelly or any other creature, and it was able to return that information. You can uh, ask questions looking for morphological features. Here, we're going to ask, what are some creatures with caudal fins? This is not um, querying Fathom, the FathomNet database directly. This is just using ChatGPT functionality. And also, we've done some pre-processing using the Worms database and also Wikipedia. Potentially, we'll add other sources. Um, but, oops. Uh, but this is just able to get data uh, based on these basic concepts. Being that it's using ChatGPT, sometimes things get a little confused. It's not 100% perfect. Um, so we can see we, we typed in what are some creatures with caudal fins, and it didn't couldn't quite figure that out the first time. So there is a kind of a non-deterministic element, which is somewhat troubling. So we're working on making the whole project more robust. But when we re-entered it, it was able to return uh, species or creatures with caudal fins and give you information, give you a list of some of those species. So in addition to um, having this mostly robust uh, name resolution, we can search uh, the FathomNet database using Fathom GPT by typing in custom queries, or in this case, clicking the examples, find me images of moon jelly, or find me images of Aurelia orita. And on the fly, it will create a custom SQL query. So it turns your prompt into SQL. So we've done some fine tuning on the FathomNet database. And you can see it actually tells you, uh, it shows you the, the specific query. Uh, I know we don't, the average user may not have access 
to the SQL server directly like this. Um, so potentially we'll be revising this. So instead of um, prompt to SQL query, it'll be a prompt to the API call. But here, this prompt, find me images from FathomNet of uh, the species. It returns uh, a list of images. You can then click on an image. It'll provide the taxonomic detail. If there's a bounding box um, that shows more where in the image the species has been found, it will, will provide that. And it will provide at least some of the scientific measurements um, that are provided with the image. So if there's annotation uh, with, with each image, it will show that in this, this card that pops up. Um, you can do more complex queries, so you can find images that are uh, that are of a sp certain species with certain constraints. So here we're looking for images um, sorted by depth. <clears throat> Again, you can click on images. If there's any associated metadata, we'll provide that. Here's one that does have some associated metadata, and these images are sorted by, I guess, the lowest depth in this case. Um, you can find the best images where best in this case means the largest images. And you can kind of combine the name resolution features, uh, uh, the concept identification with the uh, image querying. So here we're saying find me images of orange creatures. And so it's using its knowledge base of what species are orange, as is defined by, I guess, Wikipedia in this case, and then performing a query on the creatures it's found. You can see the list in the query itself, and then returns creatures that are orange from the database. And of course, you can click on the image to find more details. Here's one using the concept of pr uh, predators of um, moon jellyfish. So I don't know if this might, you see a, a, a error here. This might be because people are trying out as I'm trying it out. Let's see if just pressing new chat and reloading solves this problem. It looks like it does, which is great. Oh, okay, we'll try this. If, if people are clicking on things, maybe just give me five minutes to kind of go through it and then you, you can have at it. Um, here, we're gonna ask a question about the taxonomy. So if you just want the taxonomy without um, looking at a specific image, you can get the taxonomy tree. That might be interesting. Um, if you, if you do have familiarity with the, the structure of the FathomNet database, I'm not sure who would, but if you do have um, knowledge of the metadata of how the database schema is structured, you can query that information. That might be useful in seeing how much of a certain species is available in the image, uh, or sorry, in the FathomNet database. And here we're searching, find me any three species of starfish and get me their total image count in the database. So clearly it's doing and some name resolution, and then it's uh, querying the counts within the database and providing a tabular um, return. Uh, we can also search by image. So you are welcome to try this out and drop your own image into here. Um, I'll just, we've got some default ones if you just want to see how it works. So this is an image that's not from FathomNet, but maybe rather than typing in the name of the species, you're maybe don't know the name of the species, you can uh, search by image. So here we're uploading an image, you can move the bounding box around to, you know, if it's an image with multiple species, multiple creatures, add it and then say something like, find me similar images.
and it looks like it's done a pretty good job of finding creatures that look like this. It doesn't look like the query itself um, has done any name resolution here. It's just uh, using a cosine similarity search to look for images that are, are that match this one. Let's do another one because I, I like it when this works. Let's look for this clownfish. I don't know if there's any clownfish in the database. Probably not, no. But okay. this is still going to be a fun. We'll see what happens. Um, so while waiting for this, I'm also just mindful of the time. When are we done with this? This is, oh, we have plenty of time. Um, do you want to yeah, be, oh, go ahead. You want to be taking questions through this? Yeah, if questions pop up, I'm kind of rushing through it just to show the functionality and then there'll be, should be plenty of time for, look, there okay. is a. Jordan will answer your question later. Okay. Um, one more, just for fun. Let's look at the this jellyfish. I mean, similar images. GPT is pretty robust to misspellings and typos. And according to our current uh, similarity metric, these are the images that match this image most closely. Um, we can also, instead of returning images, we can return kind of a transformation of that data into uh, a visualization. So here's an example, generate a heat map of all the species in Monterey Bay. Let me reload it, try that again. Obviously, some of the these kind of you know uh, token limits are because we're just running it on our, our mach local machine in our lab, and that should be sorted out once we uh, once we finalize the project and figure out a place to host it. So. This one's a little more speculative. I don't know why it gave me a map of Fresno, <laughs> but it, it was smart enough. So it, you know, centered on the totally wrong place. So this is a little more speculative. It's pretty exciting when it works, but it gets things a little bit off sometimes. And this is where more work needs to be done in the fine tuning. And part of the reason I'm excited to talk to all of you, especially in the breakout sessions, is to figure out um, what types of queries, what types of visualizations you'll be interested in. And once we have that information, we can fine tune our Fathom GPT model to produce better results, especially with regards to um, the visualizations. So it produces an interactive uh, visualization where you can uh, roll over these dots and figure out what species is was found in Monterey Bay. We can type in things like generate a scatter plot um, between oxygen and pressure data. So you can even use you know queries that are a little bit ambiguous, and it can usually determine what it means. So it's going to create a scatter plot, hopefully with oxygen levels on one side and pressure data on the other axis, uh, constrained by creatures, species in Monterey Bay, and then to return a, a plotly uh, visualization on the fly. So it tells you what it's done. Below is a scatter plot showing the relationship between oxygen pressure data in Monterey Bay. And on the y-axis, you have the pressure. On the x-axis, you have the oxygen levels. And again, it's, uh, it it's there's some interactivity here. Um, I don't know if this information is that useful. It might be more information useful if you had information about the actual um, mission or that more information about when the measurement was taken, but nonetheless, you get at least get some initial information. 
Uh, it can produce, in this case, a bar chart displaying temperature ranges for uh, Aurelia Rita and Pine Conopatia. I can't even pronounce that. So what we're working on is the basic functionality is pretty exciting, and we're trying to push the boundaries of the complexity to see what types of answers it can return and if they're useful. So as everyone probably knows, GPT is prone to hallucinating sometimes. So we definitely want to get this in the hands of people who would actually use it and get feedback when it works and when it doesn't work and to get a sense of what types of representations would be most interesting. And here's one last one I'll show you is how to generate a box plot showing oxygen levels. Uh, and this one looks like it didn't work perfectly. So I'm not sure what it's trying to show here. But nonetheless, uh, again, the link I provided in the chat, feel free to explore it. The last thing I want to show before I take questions is um, research that we're currently exploring, which is the, the pattern extraction, kind of an extension of that similarity search I showed earlier. Here um, we're uh, enabling a user to upload an image, but rather than just searching for the image, we might want to search for the specific pattern. Um, so we've got some interactive features where you are actually looking for the pattern itself. So here we can show, uh, first we can, if it's an image with lots of creatures, we can use segment anything to figure out the mass for a specific creature. Then we can click on uh, particular elements of the pattern to, oops, to, here's an example. We're clicking on that one creature and then it highlights that. Oops, screen sharing is paused. Hold on a second. What happened? Sorry about that. I, my screen sharing stopped for a second. Anyways, here's the example. Uh, a user can click on a single fish. It then masks out that fish, makes it larger. You can then click on elements of that fish to try and search for a specific pattern. In this case, it's look, you know, the uh, user here is clicking on the yellow tail or the blue stripes, um, increasing the threshold of what uh, parts of the pattern it finds. And then you can load in that pattern and then look for images that have it. So this is kind of work in progress. It's uh, not perfect at the moment. And I guess a question for this community, these communities are would something like that be useful and how exactly would it be useful? So right now we think it might be interesting potentially to find similar patterns in related species. To find similar patterns within a, a single habitat potentially, or to find different patterns um, within the same species, or maybe even the same instance. I, I don't know if that would be useful or not, or even possible. All right, I think I'll end there. Um, I would love people to try this out and give us some feedback. In the breakout sessions, I, I'm gonna be talking to the marine science breakout group to get a sense of what use cases would be especially useful. And then uh, my students, uh, which are Nabeen Kanal, Amy Yu, as well as Anav Chaudhary, Dennis Chu, and Ink Jang will be in the programmer's breakout and can provide much more details about how they uh, uh, created the application to interface with the GPT, how they did the name resolution, the similarity search, how they were able to generate custom visualizations using the Plotly library, and also um, provide more details about the more speculative work of this kind of pattern matching. So I see there's questions. I don't know if they're about. Yeah, okay. there are. Um, so I can, I can relay them to you. Uh, we have actually quite a bit of time. So if you have more questions, that's great. Um, so I think the first one is from Jordan. Uh, was this LLM trained or fine tuned? Or are you using something like GPT-4 via the API while providing base information to pull queries from like instant, for instance, from FathomNet? Uh, yes, this is uh, uh, fine tuned uh, using some of chat GPT of uh, GPT's tools, we're using the GPT API. Um, it's a 
in the programming breakout, we'll kind of um, detail the different steps we're using GPT. Sometimes we use GPT 3.5, it's much faster and cheaper. And then in some cases, if that fails, we have a fallback system to then use uh, four or 4.5, which is more expensive and slower, but generally has better results. Um, okay. And then um, there's also a question about whether we're, there will be an API in the future or just accessible via chat. Uh, that's a good question. We've been focus, focusing on this chat, but yeah, there's no reason that this all this functionality couldn't be an API itself, which then you know creates um, uh, API calls to FathomNet. So it's I guess it could it could op operate as kind of a natural language API to uh, FathomNet. Mm -hmm. Of um, course, the interface also provides you know image feedback and the ability to kind of I mean some of the stuff needs an interactive interface. Some yeah. of the functions for sure. And then just so you know, like we're envisioning adding this to the FathomNet website as a way to explore and visualize data that are contained within the database. Um, it's still early, so we're trying to understand the various use cases, which is why I guess is wanting to speak to both groups um, uh, as part of the workshop. And uh, I just I see Brian's comment in case I misunderstood, there is a FathomNet API already. Um, you don't have to type in SQL directly or use the Fathom GPT interface to get to the FathomNet database. There is already an API, which is pretty robust. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so you, Chen, you had a question, um, and we actually saw this, I think, with the Aurelia case, um, you know, experiencing when the model hallucinates and what are your plans to, to mitigate this issue? Uh, that's a good question. Um, right now, we, we need to collect data from this community precisely um, to let us know when the results are wrong, when it seems like something's been hallucinated. Sometimes we can catch it, we can just see an error is created, but sometimes it generates information that looks totally plausible to a, a non-marine scientist. So um, as we roll this um, prototype out and, and get it to the hands of, of FathomNet users, um, we We'll, we plan on implementing uh, a feedback mechanism to let us know when there's hallucinations. So basically what we need to do is we need to fine tune on as many prompts as possible, get a sense of what type of prompts we'll be using. And the, the, um, the more correct baseline cases we have of a mapping of natural language to an accurate, in this case, SQL query, um, the more accurate it will be. I think, um, it will never be 100% accurate, but hopefully it'll be more like, you know, 95% accurate and the, the um, we'll just certainly have disclaimers on the tool, but it's meant to be kind of a starting point for someone querying the FathomNet database. And that, I mean, one thing that's nice about GPT is you can ask a question and then refine it. So maybe it's your prompt wasn't as clear as it could, could be. So you can just re-ask the prompt or tell GPT, tell the GPT interface to, hey, I didn't mean that what I meant by you know, this term is actually this, and then it can re create a new query based on that context of what you said and got wrong and what you said now with more detail. So yeah, I think most was, I was going to say that was a really good, important point to emphasize is that, you know, you can see the SQL query, so you can review really quickly whether the prompt or where the prompt perhaps failed. Um, but sorry, go ahead. No, and you can tell GPT that it was wrong and then it will correct itself. So right now, I mean, there are just certainly plans for thinking about how to integrate this in the portal, which I, I, I believe is meant for a wider group of um, people to use. But um, the FathomNet community ideally has a lot more familiar, familiarity with, with uh, the, the, the type of data that is being returned. So. Yes, please let us know if that data is incorrect at any moment. Mm -hmm. Very discerning community for sure. Um, and then there's another question, although I think we've answered it in the chat. How do you get metadata, the source of data, or the source of data used for the graphs and heat maps? So, you know, the source of that data is, is FathomNet. Um, you can use the API um, to pull that metadata. Um, there's also FathomNet Pi. Um, but what we're seeing here, right, is the Fathom GPT interface is, is creating SQL queries from um, natural language 
to then uh, pull data from the FAMA database. So there's a number of different ways you can access the metadata. Any other questions? I think that addresses what's been asked in the chat so far. Yeah, thanks for the feedback. I will be uh, present at the Marine Science Breakout Group and I, I, I'm i happy to answer more questions and I also have questions for you about how you might use a tool like this. I see some of the comments, thank you. Um, and I'm just gonna post, I'll repost the uh, the Google form, if you have some ideas and want to use it now, I'll repost it during the breakout sessions as well. But that information will be very useful for us um, because I'm sure there's some use cases we haven't imagined yet. And we could certainly improve the fine tuning with more feedback from all of you. And then if you don't fill out that form now, we'll follow up with that form and share it with all of the people who registered for the Feather Network Shop.